man is all imagination. Therefore, a man must be where he is in imagination, for his imagination is himself. Imagination is active at and through any state that it is aware of. If we take shifting of awareness seriously, there are possibilities beyond belief. The senses join man in forced and unholy wedlock to what, were he imaginatively awake, he would put asunder. We need not feed on sense data. Shift the focus of awareness and see what happens. However little we move mentally, we should perceive the world under a slightly changed aspect. Awareness is usually moved about in space by movement of the physical organism but it need not be so restricted. It can be moved by a change in what we are aware of. Man is manifesting the power of imagination whose limits he cannot define. To realize that the real self, imagination, is not something enclosed within the spatial boundary of the body is most important. The previous video story proves that when we meet a person in the flesh, that his real self need not be present in space where his body is. It also shows that sense perception can be thrown into operation outside of the normal physical means, and that the sense data produced is of the same kind as those which occur in normal perception. The idea in the mother's mind which started the whole process going was the very definite idea of being in the place where her daughter lived. And if the mother really were in that place, and if the daughter were present, then she would have to be perceptible to her daughter. We can only hope to understand this experience in imaginal, and not in mechanical or materialistic terms. The mother imagined elsewhere as being here. London was just as here to her daughter living there as San Francisco was here to the mother living there. It hardly ever crosses our minds that this world might be different in essence from what common sense tells us it so obviously is. Blake writes, I question not my corporeal or vegetative eye any more than I would question a window concerning a sight. I look through it and not with it. This looking through the eye not only shifts consciousness to other parts of this world, but to other worlds as well. Astronomers must wish they knew more of this looking through the eye, this mental traveling that mystics practiced so easily. Mental traveling has been practiced by awakened men and women since the earliest days. Sir Arthur Eddington said that all we have a right to say of the external world is that it is a shared experience. Things are more or less real according to the extent to which they are capable of being shared with others or with ourselves at another time. But there is no hard and fast line. Accepting Eddington's definition of reality as shared experience, the above story is as real as the earth or a color for it was shared by both mother and daughter. The range of imagining is such that I must confess that I do not know what limits, if any, there are to its ability to create reality. All these stories show us one thing, that an imaginal activity implying the wish fulfilled must start in the imagination apart from the evidence of the senses in that journey that leads to the realization of desire.